over there falling apart. Hitting the falling to pieces. I mean, I am getting old. Well, you know, I, it's funny you say that. Well, no. We're just diving right yeah. in here. We are. <laughs> I was on my way to your house, and I, I had, like, a weird pain in my side. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, definitely cancer. And then I was like, no, probably nothing. And then I just had this other thought of, like, wow, I guess that's just, like, a part case of, of getting the 30s. old. Yes. Yeah. Where you just have weird, unexplainable mm-hmm. pains <laughs> in weird places. Mm-hmm. Like, I was convinced last night that I had, like, deep vein thrombosis or whatever, that what like, a blood that? clot in my leg. Deep- Yes, Babe. I don't know what it, that is even, but I was God, thinking that I, like I had a blood clot or something because my one of my feet went numb and tingly, and like not like pin like yeah. it felt different than just my foot's asleep. And I was like, what is happening? And then I got a real bad knot in the back of my calf, and I'm like, oh my God, I have a blood clot. I'm definitely dying. And yeah. so I put on my compression socks from when I had surgery. <laughs> That's good. And they was fine. So huh. who knows? I could have narrowly a- a- avoided a. I'm gonna miss you when you're <laughs> perished. No, I already, I already told you. I feel like I'm going to live forever. So. Yeah, we'll okay. seize the day while we yeah, have you. Yeah, Episode yeah. 363. <laughs> we, this could be her final. Oh, no. Get out. Her final episode, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Episode 363 was the end. Um, it's you a good number fine. to go out on. Yeah. At least you'll have one of those things where it's like you're young enough where people will be like, that is tragic. And they'll be like, she was so pretty. And I know whatever you're going to say at my funeral is going to be so good. <laughs> I am pretty good at that. I am sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'd be, give a great. Yeah, eulogy. I'm pretty good at speeches. Yeah. I'll work on one. Yeah. Let's see how. <laughs> maybe I'll do a test run oh, on here. How spooky! <laughs> it is. Are you feeling extra spooky right now? I am feeling so spooky. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of in this weird place where I feel like I, I'm ready to put my Halloween decorations up. Yeah. Because I got them and got it right. Yeah. But. uh other stuff in my house isn't done yet, so it feels weird to like mm. decorate when I haven't like installed the curtains yet. <laughs> it's like maybe like order of installed. operations, you know? Because right. I gotta like not just hang; I gotta like maybe do the you could combine and all that, that job. It would make the curtain thing more bearable because that, you love right. Halloween so much. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so like hang them with the goal of putting up cute little like bats on them or something. Yeah, on the curtains. Well, and do you have, like, spooky blackout ones? <laughs> no, but that would be fun. Your house isn't spooky at all. It's all white and I know. bright. It's totally not You're gonna spooky. You're going to need a fog machine or something know, in there. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll have to have a think about that. Some dry ice. <laughs> So that Welcome Tinder dates to my <laughs> lair. Just, I'm just over here stirring my cauldron. Right. Nothing to see. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Tinder dates. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Yes. Uh, well, I'm glad you're feeling spooky. Yes. Everyone's depending on you. For Halloween? Yes. Oh, good. Right, right. Yes. I got it. I mean, I want to see pictures also of the oh, yeah. decorations once Ooh, they're up. Oh, I can't wait. I'm real excited. Yours are great. I love that poison bottle you have. Thank you. Oh, yes. That's really cool. I like to make it look all like, do you, is it Halloween? Or, or steampunk. Oh, right. Or always <laughs> like this. Yeah, right. Like, is this all year round? <laughs> is she a mad scientist and, you know, makes is there potions? Any, like, <laughs> Halloween thing that you're not into like i don't know a spider you know, oh oh cobwebs i'm not into like like i don't need like the zombie thing i can see that yeah it's we've like had a different, enough yeah like the monster theme like i'm good with that i feel like we should be playing monster mash year round though <gasps> i love that song it's a great excellent tune yes and i don't understand we play thriller year round we do yeah. i mean it gets special yeah it does billing yes. <laughs> during October, but I feel like because of the Michael Jackson problem, mm-hmm. we need to really right. hype up Monster Mash. You're right. You know what? <laughs> other we need to put other Halloween songs in the forefront, limelight, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yes. God, I love Thriller. I mean, well, it was a graveyard smash. <laughs> Good one. I just feel like a lot of songs are put into the seasonal category yeah. that they shouldn't be. Monster Mash absolutely should be played year round as should oh, why, uh, yeah. uh, let it snow through the whole of winter not oh, just true. Christmas yeah. time. Yeah. Would you how would you feel about let it snow being played in January, February? Good. Okay, you're fine Real with it. good. Some people I've heard feel like <laughs> Like they're over it, at that point. <laughs> but I don't live where it snows, so I don't know. Oh, I'm over the snow, but not yeah. that. Snow. So, like, if you have to experience shoveling your car, 
Yeah. Are you, how are you going to feel about doing it to the song Let It Snow? Maybe a little better. Maybe it would make oh, it festive. Okay. Oh, I like instead this. Instead of drudgery. I like that. This is the opposite than the Susie I, I, <laughs> like of like, no, that makes it worse. That's the pile I like Christmas music. Okay, That's the I thing. And I'm it. like, I'm not ready for it to be over. Yeah. Other one I want to put on the Halloween list that I feel like they only play, Love Potion number nine. G- good point. That could totally be year round. Yes. There's nothing that says it's Halloween-y. Wait, it's just, it is year round though. I only hear it around Halloween. Oh, really? On the Halloween mixes, yeah. Oh, well, you that's because you're not listening to the channels like I am that play oh, that song. Oh, that's probably true. But I like like they they give me song. more of like like uh, Rock and Robin, and <clears throat> you know. <laughs> well, I'm glad we settled all these yes. seasonal questions. Yes, there also should, should there's an entire market for Thanksgiving music that no one has tapped. Hmm. I want things about Seems cornucopias, about gravy. <laughs> Gravy, food like Gra- food gravy and could be gratitude. Funny. It could be like a pun. We could write could a song like... called "Gravy and Gratitude." Oh, mm-hmm. serve it up, <laughs> Colin. Serve it up. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's hilarious. I'll, I'll have seconds. It writes itself, really. <laughs> oh, I did already purchase a Halloween costume that is not a witch. What is it? But I'm, I'm, I'm going to because I'm going to do like maybe multiple days of Halloween. Yeah. Like, no, I you know, showcase, that. right? Yeah. I found a really cool Miss Frizzle costume. And I Where feel like with this hair it? on Amazon. Oh, it was really you just were the searching dress. for it. I no, think it just came stumbled. up oh, in my, okay. like, I don't know. Amazon was like, we think you would like we this. We see you. Yeah, we see you. Okay. Yeah. What made it cool though? I don't get it. It was just like a, dr- a dress with planets on it. But I feel like I've been wearing my hair curly a lot. Mm-hmm. So really, it's just the hairdo. I, like, in my head, I was like, oh, what other Halloween costumes do I not have to wear a wig The millennials for? will love that. Yeah. Because wasn't that the age that yes. it was like a big Yeah, it was hit. like my, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they did, so as I was like looking at her picture and everything, what does Miss Frizzle wear? Um, uh, it came up with like the pictures of the reboot that they've done. I think it's on oh. Netflix or something. They made her sexier. I'm not happy. Oh, okay. And they gave her a nose you. job. She used to have like a this real job. cute like little bump in her nose and she was like older and yeah. now she's like 25 and hot. Yes. Yeah, no. I'm not into it. Wait, hold on a minute. Okay. Well, let me show you a picture yeah. so you can kind of like see. Okay. There you go. <laughs> oh my God. So, like, yeah, she's hot. Yeah. And with the pouty youthful, lips. Youthful. Youthful. Come on. Uh, yeah. She's like a TA. Yeah. She's not a teacher. Yeah, she's a hall monitor right. at best. At best. Okay. Right. Wonder she's definitely I love, still interning. I love that somebody, I don't know if they did, what do they call that when they test a show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it's co- the name is now, but it's oh. like where they show a movie or a show to an audience mm-hmm. to see what their feedback is. Yeah. And then they'll be like, I wish Miss Frizzle was prettier or whatever. Ew, do you and think then they, they said that they probably did. Market group? What? Well, oh, what, yes. Market group? What is it? Something like that, right? Yes. Mm hmm. Damn yeah. it. I, it's right there. Whatever it is. Yeah. Some, focus well, group. Focus group. Yes. Somebody had to say, I like this show a lot, but she should be hotter. Make her sexier. Yeah. Or younger or whatever oh, it is. Yeah. Or That's were weird. all of the writer or the illustrators just dudes and Horny. they did that hmm. Hmm. i don't know we're gonna have to we're gonna have to find <laughs> like out i'm genuinely upset Netflix. yeah i'm like mm. well anyway i'm excited yeah. for your costume yeah gotta get a little lizard stuffed animal to go with it yeah yeah um okay wait let me talk about another outfit i'm gonna be wearing yes. which is my leggings from Fadlet- fabletics yes because they're adorable Yes. I had them on the other day. Legging season, too. <laughs> Legging season. Mm-hmm. I love that. And it kind of is. You're not wrong. Yes. Yeah. It, well, once it's fall Stretchy. Weather. I'm going to eat Halloween candy. <laughs> and then Thanksgiving. <laughs> I need only stretchy pants from here until January. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. And they are perfect for fall. They look cute with everything. I had them on the other day, and I thought, oh, it's definitely fall. Yes. Because it's time for leggings. Fabletics are great because they are super cute and stylish and they have tons of different styles, but they're affordable. So whatever your price range, they are here for you. So when you're going to the gym or running errands and you want to look cute, Fabletics 
uh, clothes. They have like full sets too. Yes, I love the set. Leggings. Like yeah. takes the think work out of it. Just like, yeah. That I noticed look. that about you that you'll just go for the whole. Yeah. Because they know better than I do. That, yeah. That looks good. All the fabrics will go well together. The colors mm-hmm. head to toe. Let's and they do. have great features. Like the leggings often have like places to put your phone. Yeah. Things like that or your keys if you're out and about. Um, and they love us and we love them. And so they gave us a deal for you guys. Um, they're offering our listeners an incredible deal. You don't want to miss. Get two pairs of the leggings for only $24. It's a $99 value. These are fantastic pants. When you sign up for a VIP program, just go to fabletics.com slash brain candy to take advantage of the deal right now. That's fabletics.com slash brain candy to get two pairs of the leggings for only 24 bucks. Also free shipping on orders over $49. International shipping is available. And there's no commitment when you purchase your first order, fabletics.com slash brain candy. And they have like... Hoodies and yes. sports bras and crop tops. Love all every those. kind of athleisure. Yes, yeah, lots of crop tops. Oh, I haven't been on in a while. I bet the fabrics <clears throat> are, are like the prints. Yeah, all different. They're always updating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, check them out. See what you think. Grab some leggers. Um, okay, how about how I thought you'd be interested in this? Period sinking uh-huh. is a myth. False myth. Buh, I beg it's to been differ. Debunked by. Several studies have found this is not true, and there was an, a whole article in Atlantic about like why this won't die, that like we won't accept it. Okay. Yes. But I'm going to push back a little bit mm-hmm. because my man, <clears throat> Robert Sapolsky, mm-hmm. heavily studied this, and they called it the Sarah Lawrence effect, which is kind of funny because- Yeah, that was no the question. original yeah. study that has been debunked. But it works with hamsters, and they all you have to do is plug their little noses and- if you can put the, so it works with animals and not humans. I don't. Because I don't they think that it's it, like, established pumps, that it works with animals. That it, they did the its tests on on the hamsters and they were they sent their cycles would sink, but only if the a male was present and they would pump in the pheromones or like the smell of a male and that would work too, and so I guess to, oh, they they what tossed out these guys. They, it just said that <clears throat> it was false that, and not, not only is it false, but that people like you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, like, I have not involved in the research at all. And I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and. But it talked yeah. about you in the article because it's, it's talked about the aggressive resistance. Yeah. And I think that that is more interesting yes. than the study or, or it's truth or falsehood. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that there is something compelling women like you to really yeah. want to believe in this theory and I want to know why. Now that you say it, I can I kind of can see why. It's like there's not a lot that makes us feel like we're powerful or in control <laughs> or something like that and like the idea that I I don't know. It it and it almost feels like this thing that men don't get to have or be a part of and it makes it feel like very like kind of a female tribe and you know, this is how it goes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I really do feel like it's like, I don't know. Yeah. You're really invested yeah. in this idea. It's very strange. The weird thing is, is I've always believed that like anecdotally, I find this to be all true. Well, they talked about that too. How like the reason that you think that yeah. is because traditionally the cycle is 28 days, you know, mm-hmm. some are more or less, but 28 is sort of the average. Mm-hmm. And so there's only like a two week difference yeah. in the most separate. Like if right. yours is on the first and mine's on the fifteenth, that's as far apart as we can get really in like this uh-huh. cycle. And so that's like pretty close it anyway. seems like, oh yeah, I just had mine and you just had yours, but like that's a whole week difference and there's yeah. only four weeks total. That's true. And so we kind of trick ourselves into thinking like it would more be <clears throat> things like I was a camp counselor at a sleepaway camp. And that week, three girls in the cabin would get their period for the mm-hmm. first time ever in their whole life. Mm-hmm. And it seems well, maybe like, that's a different thing. Maybe you know, that can be triggered by like stress or yeah, hormones or could, you, whatever. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. I mean, I believe these researchers, of course, <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm going to need to read that study. I'm going to need to hear Robert upset. Sapolsky's rebuttal. Th- rebuttal, because <laughs> I just watched him in a, another show last night, and so you know. He's Maybe he's adjusted. Maybe he's since... If he's a good scientist, he sure will. 
right. Mm-hmm. I just thought that that was fun to read. And it was describing how part of the perpetuation of the myth has been popular culture and how yeah. women are presented often in films and TV shows as very two-dimensional. And the only time periods are brought up is to indicate pregnancy or to demonstrate bonding between people in the sinking process. Okay, yes. So it's almost like a yes. tool yes. to a plot device that then oh we're God. like, we love this yes. idea, yeah. let it be true, kind of. We just need to be more seen in other ways. Like, Yeah, maybe if, we, maybe if we add the power you're describing. Right. that's what I think it is. Although I was thinking, though, while I was reading it yeah. about how, in a way, this type of sort of the witchy woman vibe of like, yeah. we sync up, our yes. bodies are fucking plotting against you, can be <laughs> used against women. Hence, you know, the Salem witch trials, et cetera, yeah. where like yeah. there's this fear about women and our right. intuition and our ability to like outthink the idiots <laughs> that they think that they're scared. It scares right. them. Just another so thing they can't explain. Kind of Maybe thing. we're invested in it for that reason where we're just sort mm-hmm. of like, oh no, we're powerful. Yeah. I like that. Let's keep that <laughs> narrative going. Yeah. Right. Definitely that. Just wanted to update you on that one. Interesting. I'm so Do you sorry. feel, have you ever been like in a, I mean, you were on all those shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I thought it was like legit. This? Yeah. yeah, we've talked about it on the show before too, and right. it seems true. Yeah, interesting. And, but- and I remember when you said that about the male being present, and it sounded intuitive. Oh. Where it's like, yeah. okay, if we all want to be impregnated by yeah. this male, then we're all. It's like front loading. How totally, the Iowa caucus is always first. <laughs> yes, it's uh. and they'll keep moving it so that they're always first. It's yeah. almost like that uh-huh. in the no, form no, of maybe. period yes. thinking. Yes. But I've gone too far with that metaphor (laughs) or analogy or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, and I always heard it was like the woman who was the most socially dominant, Mm. you know? So yours, you felt like yours was always first? No, the opposite. It almost gave me like a, oh, you know, it kept me humble because I always thought that I would sync up with other people. Like I was never the one leading the pack. Anyway, (laughs) you know. Something to think about. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing that they've debunked. What? Uh, that cracking your knuckles gives you arthritis. Yes. Have you seen this? I did. Yes. And I'm Are relieved. You, me too, because <laughs> I am a serious knuckle cracker. I don't understand. That to me was another thing it. where it felt like. Why are they so wanting to believe that this is detrimental I know to my what that knuckle is. health? Because it's it's like moms who are annoyed by the noise. Oh. Who are like, don't do that. Oh, You're yeah. gonna get arthritis. Just like, you know, don't Staring sit too close the to the TV. TV. Your eyes will you'll go cross eyed. Don't make don't hold that face for too long, it'll stay that way. Yeah. There's things Although we that said. was true. What what? I mean, that's what braces are. You hold something long enough, it will stay. This is kind of true. I do talk out of the side of my mouth and my wrinkles are Oh well, yeah, on that's one the thing. Side. That's what it's wrinkles like, are. Yes, I, I'm like so seeing that one, this. They, they were right about oh, that one. <laughs> Don't I know it? Yeah, but the guy who who that had investigated this or one of the people who did a study, uh, his name was Donald Unger and he happens to be a doctor who was from Thousand Oaks, which is where I, my hometown, mm-hmm. so I love that. And this study he did for 50 years, oh, he that only is cracked sad. one hand. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous, right? And when he finally examined them, 50 years, when he continued to yeah. examine them, no uh, evidence of arthritis in either one and no difference between the two. Was he a case study though, or did he expand this beyond his own knuckles? Well, he, he <laughs> it, it was then expanded, but like, it, and they say in the article, this particular quote unquote study wasn't exactly scientific. It was like, needs to be more, you know, research based and blah, blah, blah. But they looked at like sports medicine people <laughs> and they all said, no. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm glad about that. They looked and at X-rays and everything of like left over 200 people in other studies, and they all were like, "No, nah, it doesn't do anything." Do you know anyone that doesn't crack a knuckle? No, right? It's just it's that's normal. a really. Good, but I did hear once a guy who like t- did his neck. Okay, that's, and then that's different. Story. Bad news. Like, what? He's paralyzed. No, like something happened where he <laughs> like severely injured himself from. Like forcing a neck crack. What himself. kind of severe injury? I don't though? remember. I just saw it but on. Not paralysis. No, okay, I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. I know I'm mad at him. Well, I because you can't you can't do that. You gotta shit. be careful. I know. It's and, a dangerous world out there. 
And if you're going to be careful, then you should try Omax CryoFreeze because it is a pain reliever that you can put on those nagging muscles so you don't have to freaking crack your neck like that dummy. Right. Uh, yeah, and join a little pain. on it. Yeah, <laughs> do that instead and try. It's a natural breakthrough in pain relief because they use CBD. Omax, of course, is mm-hmm. the uh, genius company behind this. We love Omax. Um, it's non-prescription and triple action pain relief. It's a roll-on, so it blocks pain receptors and reduces inflammation in those Ooh, trouble nice. spots. Yeah. And the CBD, God bless it. I mean, mm-hmm. it works like a charm within 10 minutes of application and relief lasts up to eight hours, which is a lot longer than the over-the-counter Ooh, nice. scenarios. Yes. So that's fun. Um, so you guys should try it. They sent us a deal for you guys. Um if you're looking to relieve your muscle and joint pain within 15 minutes and need a natural yet powerful solution that is tested and works, try CryoFreeze Pain Relief Roll-On. It's quick, abs- absorbing, scientifically backed formula provides pain relief instantly. And if pro athletes use it, well, it oh, must yeah. work. Goodness. Remember to go to omaxhealth.com today and enter code Brain Candy to take advantage of the incredible savings. That's O M A X Health. Dot com and enter code Brain Kennedy at twenty percent off cryo freeze and site wide. They have lots of stuff. Don't let muscle soreness continue to be an excuse for living an active lifestyle. Go to omaxhealth.com and feel relief faster. I want to crack my knuckles now so bad. Do it. it just, but I what think are you I, waiting for? I already did. How was, was like, it? It was good. Oh, there we go. Do you hear yes. that, people? Now so the, the, around one of here. my funny, one of the funniest things that was in this article that I'm like, oh, now I know exactly what this is, is that guy Unger who did the knuckle cracking yeah. thing for 50 years, won a, a 2009 Ing Nobel Prize. You know the funny Nobel Prizes we were talking about? Yes. He won one for the study. Right. So they're legitimate studies, yes. but just like funnier yeah. like, than a normal. Come on. <laughs> you know. come on. They're like, yeah, yeah, he put 50 years into knuckle research. Right. You deserve... At least a fake Nobel Prize. Wonder why he was so interested. Because his mom told him, "Don't do that. You'll get arthritis." And he, and he wanted, was like, "I'm going to prove stubborn. her wrong." Can you believe that? No. I want to know about his wife and who, like, <laughs> like who's married that guy, and if he's still that stubborn. That, that makes. I want to know about the questions, like what kind of personality type. There is does a fine that. line between stubbornness and uh, passion, and there is like overlap. Uh-huh. But I feel like this yeah. guy, he might be really nice or a real dick. Yeah. Kind but of, he does not have arthritis. Does not in either hand. <laughs> so far. So we far. We know that. Oh, that's funny. I was reading about how, um, you know, this is another kind of, this is our theme is like debunking. This mm-hmm. was a study about what happens in the brain when you see or think about sex, like when you see Ooh, sex images or okay. whatever. Yes, yes, yes. And the sort of prevailing wisdom had always been you know, women and men process things differently. They might be aroused, but like mm-hmm. they're, I don't know. Different hemispheres that were different or parts like, of the brain. You know, this the idea that men are visual. Yes, blah, right, blah, right, blah. right. That's what I was going to say. <clears throat> More like a visual versus a This has also been debunked emotional. saying that wow. men and women have the same brain activity when they're witnessing like porn yeah, or okay. sexual yeah. images. Um, but there mm-hmm. was a caveat, which is that... <laughs> The same stuff in your brain lights up whenever... That's the technical term. Yeah. Um, whenever um, they see vomit or feces as well. So it could be disgust or pleasure. We don't know. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's a pretty big caveat. On. We don't know if the We're woman's like, aroused or disgusted. Yeah. Well, this is every, every guy not being able to pick up signals. Right? Oh, my... Gosh. But that seems crazy. Yeah, that the same exact so, parts of the brain mm, light up. I would imagine it's like <laughs> your emotional center of your brain, where emotions are processed because you're having some like big emotional reaction yeah. to it, and then you the would think fear negative center? and positive. Mm. Like your amygdala. I mean, I can see that. I I'm afraid because in a way, like. Like if you change fear to like arousal, mm-hmm. then it's kind of right. right. Like you because then I think the spicy foods and the the jumping out of airplanes and like you know getting yourself you know worked, worked up. up. Mm-hmm. So interesting. But like, come on! I feel like we just should know more. 
We should. And maybe we could just ask them. <laughs> yeah, you were disgusted you, or... Uh, <laughs> were you grossed out or hot? Because I for sure would know the difference if I'm horny or repulsed. Yeah. And I would definitely have a different feeling over vomit than I would <laughs> some sexy time. Right? Like And don't you want to know, difference. like, they're okay. very broad about the sexual imagery. What are we looking right. at? And here's the thing, though. We're just talking about activity in that region. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about how the person's labeling that activity. So, okay, yeah. you know, like, I feel like there's information there. I don't, <laughs> this is a loose, the very, like, not well thought out. We have thought. more questions. Yeah. This is always our problem. Always. But it's like, if there's activity in the emotional center, mm-hmm. then for a man, it can mean one thing. And for a woman, it can mean one thing based on the other experiences that we've had and what that feeling means. Like for us, it could feel like, oh, I'm out of control and somebody else is in charge of what's going to happen next. And we're, and that makes me feel like, I don't know, fearful or that part lights up. Whereas a man could like think, oh, this is real exciting. And yeah. now I'm like emotionally like worked up, but it's mm-hmm. like a different, yeah. you don't know what, how, what's, how Hey, maybe labeled. we're aroused and they're disgusted. Right. That's uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, <laughs> we don't know. Sure as hell hope. I don't believe that's it. the case, but right. we don't know. Huh. I guess it just raises more questions than it answers. And when, But like when a guy sees just like a naked uh, woman, mm-hmm. good looking, yeah. they're, they're, I feel like they're more likely to have a, a be aroused. Yeah. And if a woman just sees a naked man, it doesn't have the same effect, does it? I can't imagine it being the same. I, I mean, don't. I can see someone as attractive yeah. and be like, ooh. Yeah. But I can't imagine that it would be the same yeah. experience as what a guy feels. Because they, just their reactions right. seem like it's... Hmm. Oh, have you ever seen those guys where it almost seems like painful when they see like a super hot woman walk yeah, past? Yeah, they're, they're like, like ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Where you're just sort of like, oh, that is I've done that I've though. <laughs> I have. Sarah. I have. Yeah. I I will be fine with admitting that there was a recent experience that I had where I saw somebody without their shirt on and I was like, oh my God. I guess. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, oh, oh, this. Don't you think that was exceptional though? Yeah. Yeah. Usually you might think, and wow. I wasn't ex- yeah. I don't know But why you wouldn't was, have that. Like, physical Dang, like right i don't know maybe it was just the right time and the right place and the right it was different though than if you had seen vomit yeah, very <laughs> different very i have never had that reaction like that to vomit and if i do then you check me into the nearest hospital because mm-hmm. something's wrong with me yeah well this guy was good looking i guess so. the point is nobody cares because we all know what we've experienced and in general, women seem more in control yeah. of that. Yeah. Even if they're feeling the same thing, right. it certainly seems like they have more of a handle on that, yeah. the reactions that they yeah. we show. Do. Or maybe it's just like there are so many hot, beautiful ladies out there we could appreciate more, like the things that, I don't know, maybe we need to start appreciating other parts of men. That, like, oh my God. Maybe we need to objectify no, men a little more. <laughs> maybe that's it. Yeah, then we would get like that because we don't object. We, we don't do that to them. <clears throat> they do that. So like, you know, oh my gosh. Okay. So you know how in advertising, like I've talked about this in some women's studies classes, how they will just show parts of a woman. It'll be like the legs or the arms. Yeah. So like they're, they're objectifying them and like deconstructing them and kind of dehumanizing them on yeah. the page right there. Sure. Whereas most men are shown in their entirety. Like, entirety. Uh-huh. And so if you get used to being... <clears throat> turned on by just ankles or just from the knee down because that's what, you know, these vodka ads or whatever have been using for forever and subtly like hinting at you that just the legs are attractive, that you look, you see them and it's like, oh my God, legs. Right. You've been primed. You've been primed to think all these different parts of a woman are sexy. Whereas we are primed to think that things that are not visual are sexy. Mm-hmm. It's like, can you offer me security? Like those funny magazine or uh, uh, calendars that are like women's porn. And it's like a guy doing dishes and like holding a puppy and like mm-hmm. taking out the trash, you know? Maybe if it, those kind of things were... Yeah, it's a chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're cracking Hey, cases. researchers. <laughs> Listen to their show. 
our show that's the number one winner. <laughs> People's Choice Podcast Awards. You bet your ass. Number one. And we beat out one of uh, a podcast that I really like. Who? The way I see it with Mike Rowe. Really? Oh, it's so good. I mean, clearly not as good He's as great. Ours. I like him. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I was listening to it to it with my little brother. Wow. Yeah. Oh we, my god. We beat him. I mean, you know. Okay, He's this is very but... exciting. Yes. I know. I was very proud that we won. So proud. Yeah. It like didn't even sink in until just like today where I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Sarah we're and good. I were out and we got the news and it was it felt really nice because I didn't expect to win. Me neither. We're like an underdog yeah. tale. They like us. They, they really, really like us. us. And I, yeah. I'm so thankful to our listeners because yes. they really respond to our call to action. Love like that. they voted. It's so We're nice. We're here for them and they're here for us. It's beautiful. <sighs> it's great. So thank you guys if you voted. Yes. And what an honor. Mm. We're going to get a trophy. What? I mean. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put it on my mantle. Yes, you definitely that I should. I don't have. Right. <laughs> You know those people that are like, oh, I keep my Emmy on the toilet, you know, or in the bathroom. Get out. They do. And so maybe I should do that. Why do they do that? <clears throat> I mean. It kind of now seems like they want everybody to see it if yeah, they put it in the bathroom. Yeah, it's the weird, it's a, uh, what's the word? Uh, not juxtaposition, but just where you're in the bathroom, which is right. gross, but everyone's got to go. Yep. <laughs> So you know that's high traffic area. You're definitely getting eyes. And you're in the bathroom. What do you do when you're sitting there? You kind of look around. Yeah. You know? Maybe you felt like too ghost to put it on display in a actual important part of your house. Yeah, but like in an office, I feel like that's where you're supposed to put those things. Yeah, I agree. I got a couple, you know, not an Emmy, but, you know, I have like a nice glass, like, I don't know, tro- trophy, I don't know, yeah. award or whatever. Award, but yeah. For... for um, being the grand marshal at the gay pride parade. That in Long is Beach. something I would put yeah, I like, gotta keep on that my out. doorstep. That's right? amazing. Yeah. Well, it's glass and I didn't want it to break Susan. That's a special award. Thank you. Anytime the LGBTs right. give you stuff. It's going up. That is going up. I hope you polish that thing yeah, regularly. Daily. Just- <laughs> daily. <Yes. laughs> That's fun. Yeah, well, now we have another thing to add to our little trophy collection. Yes. This will go with my... Um, most improved player on the seventh grade volleyball team. Oh, improved. hey, you know what? That's good. <laughs> Not like best. That. Most improved. Improved. Oh, it hurts. She has heart, guys. <clears throat> She's dedicated. Well, whenever we give our accept- acceptance speech, I will be wearing these earrings. Oh, they're beautiful. They are Charles and Culvered. Oh, my God. I love mine. Aren't they I feel special? so fancy. I had to like tell myself, Sarah, you don't have to wear them 24-7, but then I'm like, why not? You can. Yes. We have these gorgeous Charles and Colvard um, studs, and they are made from moissanite, which is the gem that's basically so rare that it has to be made in a lab. It's ethically sourced, unlike a lot of the gemstones mm-hmm. we know and love normally, and it's conflict-free and set in 95% recycled precious metals. What a great thing. I didn't know that part. Yeah, oh, what welcome. a cool... Thing yeah. to have something beautiful that yes. you can enjoy, but know that it's responsibly mm-hmm. sourced, mm-hmm. and because no. it's a lot of money to spend on nice jewelry to not get the stuff that you know you feel like uh, ethically <clears throat> aligns with kind of your your values and things like that. And this price is so too. good. So I can't good. get over it. These are brilliant, like for an engagement ring or a yes. wedding ring or just fine jewelry, but you that you can afford still. They have everything, and they're so pretty. Tons of different sizes and shapes, like heart-shaped or vintage-inspired mm, cuts and stuff mm. like that. Just really nice stuff. And you can go and learn more and get 20% off with our special listener offer at charlesandcolvard.com slash brain candy. Again, that's charlesandcolvard.com slash brain candy. If you forget it, just tweet to me, and I'll send you the link. It's beautiful, and you'll love it, and they're just yeah. wonderful and affordable and Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, yes. You get it. Well, I do. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Um, Mm. Here's some good news. We love good news. Um, Let me find it. Okay. There's an organization called Laughter on Call Mm -hmm. that pairs comedians with dementia patients. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. Isn't that nice? This is the sweetest thing ever. Because they still want to laugh. And the comedians need to try out their jokes on somebody. For sure. And you know what? 
Mm -hmm. If you try it out one week and then you're like, oh, I've refined that joke, you could use the same joke on them next week and they'll still think it's funny or not funny, depending on how good of a comedian you are. I love this idea. I love it too. There was a woman who. Oh, God, that's so She moved her mom across the country. Her mom was suffering from dementia. And once she was in LA, the mom just sort of withered and. Well, Didn't, social connections are the yeah. only thing that matter. And the daughter thought, what have I done? Yeah. You know, I've taken her away from everything she loves and oh, now she's God. sad. So I need to make her happy. And she mentioned to someone, I wish I could just hire a comedian to come. And they were like, well, do it. Oh, I get goosebumps everywhere. Right? This is so sweet. And so now they're kind of creating this organization with the end goal of extending it to various cities. And hmm. what a great thing. Yeah. And if I ever have that, please do that for me because that... Oh my God, done deal. ...is so helpful to your mental health and well-being. Yes. To laugh. I mean, it's, it's not the important. best medicine, despite the... <laughs> no, medicine is the best medicine, <laughs> right. as from what I hear. Medicine is the best medicine, but this is second. That re- It really is. Yes. It's a beautiful... And there's so much... I was just watching <clears throat> that great show uh, Explained on Netflix, and they yeah. have a mind one, and they were talking about psychedelics. And yeah, I how, saw that too. Yeah, yeah, and how the thing that is the most important is love and connection. Yeah. That's what everybody takes away from everything. It's the most important thing. Yeah. That's, and those experiences for me where they were like life changing and I had like what is the closest thing to a religious experience. Mm-hmm. I knew that the only thing that mattered was connection with others. Yeah. And I mean, so to lose that, right. You might as well kill the person. And They're I, done. I also, I mean, this sounds silly, but to oftentimes being a comedian can be very lonely as well. Yes. You work at night. You you're alone night. during the day. You kind of need There's a little no routine. There's no connection. It's just like <gasps> audience and... Oh my gosh, you're so right. So I think I, the person they interviewed in the article said how much he learned about patience <sighs> and care and all of that from working with I this woman. This. Yeah. And so I think it's a definitely mutually beneficial yes. thing and they can make a little bit of money too. I love that. Yeah. So the comedians get paid for going. Yeah, like 25 that. bucks an hour. I you love know. this. You know, and there, I read this book a long time ago called A Whole, I think it was called A Whole New Mind that was talking about how we really have to switch, you know, we were kind of these like more left brain thinkers where it was like analytical and we needed that when it was almost this technology boom of like that kind of, mm. and in the industrial revolution, all this stuff, like our minds needed to be more like that. And now- that jobs are kind of changing and we're having this like new revolution of what even like what careers are available or important. And, you know, when I hear stories like this and about how there are jobs out there that aren't about making a product or aren't about like, you know, I'm a, you know, bricklayer and I'm laying bricks that that really isn't what it's not as satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. And, And that this is, this is this new age of, of jobs. We're in a new, what do they call it? It's called like the age of, it's not, in, uh, I can't remember, but it's basically just, we're at, we're using more of our right brain. Mm-hmm. We're using more of those emotional centers, more of the like kind of big picture thing. And then the little, you know, details in it. And with that come these jobs that we really start looking and like having to redefine or, or find almost new jobs because a lot of stuff is getting replaced by a computer mm-hmm. or by some, a machine or whatever. So this is the industry that needs to grow. Mm-hmm. The industry of human connection. The industry of yeah. relationships. Yeah. Susie's making a face like she doesn't yeah, like I'm it. Yeah, I'm just thinking. No, I love it. I, oh, yeah. I'm thinking about how true that is. Okay, it is true, yeah? Yes. yes. And, and I read this book like 15 years ago talking about this for real. Yeah, and I feel like everyone knows it, Mm -hmm. but that the further away you get from where you ought to be, the harder it feels like it would be to get there. Yeah. So that's. Well, I think it's, it's, you have to kind of expand your mind and think about it in the way that that woman's friend did when she said, Man, I wish I could just hire a comedian. Well, why don't you? Yeah. Well, you're right. Why don't I? I'll do that. There, I think that's where a lot of these ideas going to start. Mm-hmm. And somebody else goes, yeah, you sh- that is a good idea. Yeah. I can, I can just think of how many times a day I say, I wish there was. Yeah. And what if you then right. actually created it? I mean, or- Uber, you can think of was probably like that <laughs> right, and right, Postmate, right. all those kind of things yeah. were probably the same sort of yeah. origin stories of those concepts. And- well, and this is so much better because it's about 
creating yes. those connections. Yeah. They help everybody. Everyone. And I mean, getting dementia or Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. which by the way, I didn't know they were different until I read that article and they said, or. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I don't know what the difference is, but um, that's a big fear mm-hmm. of anybody mm-hmm. that's pretty big into using their brain. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that, the movie about early onset yeah. uh, Alzheimer's and stuff, how terrible that would be. Really? So man, if you can make them laugh. Mm-hmm. I was oh. encouraged by that story. I do love that. Um, and yeah. I bet their overall health would go up. That's a thing that some one of those people that studies crap. Yeah. They should look at Yeah. It. Hey, one of those guys. <laughs> Quick. Take, take a break from cracking your knuckles for a bit. Go study something that, you know, I don't know, help yeah, somebody else. Yeah, now that the knuckle guy cracked that case, mm-hmm. <laughs> we got another thing for you. You know, there's something that matters. Oh, that's funny. Dipshit. Yeah. I don't know why I'm mad at him. I don't know either. So you liked that that show, The Mind Explained, Yeah, huh? Isn't that good? Well, yeah. It's I very palatable it. and easy to understand. Super good. Every, yeah. I was, like, resisting for a while. I don't know why I do that with shows that I know, like... I do that, People too. ever... It's ones where everybody tells me I'm going to love yeah. it, then I don't watch it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I got contacted by people from The Challenge who it's were annoying. like... Then I definitely wouldn't right? watch it. So when Wes contacts me and no. he's like, I watched this episode, it totally reminded me of you, and it's okay, everything you like... To be fair, this is yeah. mean. Go, go. I agree with him. It's great. It was yeah. easy to watch. Like, it wasn't... Right. This isn't... Well, that's what I was frustrated with. I'm like, rigorous. rigorous. You just have to hang out with me for a week, and I can give you uh, that. I basically am like that. That well, that meant that memory one was what these guys got on the challenge. I gave them all those lectures about why, like, this is how you do palace. it. The memory palace. I know. And uh, they were like, well, yeah, I don't care. Oh, now Netflix makes a special, and all of a sudden you guys care about this shit. You didn't care when Sarah was talking about it around the breakfast table. Yeah, nobody just didn't have infographs. Excuse me. <clears throat> nobody does it to me anymore. I don't know why I'm getting angry. But when I was a grad student, people would give me like basically a book that you could get at Barnes and Noble right. for five dollars about religion, and be like, "I thought you'd love this," which is very sweet, right. but it's also insulting. Yeah, I'm like oh, <laughs> uh, that was psychology one hundred and one. Yeah, thankfully I'm out of that, out of the woods in that one. Yeah. But I was just like, no, no. So I bet it was bad feeling. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Yeah. I was like, yeah, no, I know all this. And then I watched it. I was like... You should send I told, him I, a I, recommendation I said all that. for like small business owners. Oh send my God, that would be really funny. Send his pamphlet. Yeah. And I know what he was doing. He was being nice. And I was like, oh, thank you for... I'm glad that like you think about me. Did any think about women brainy, send you brainy the link? Stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got yeah. it from a lot of people. Of like, you have to check this out. This is right up your alley. And I re- I, I mean, there was stuff I learned in the mindfulness one mm-hmm. on how people who meditate experience pain because it was my understanding that the level of pain that they experienced was lower Mm. but when they really looked at their brains and when how they experience the pain it's the same it just affects them for far less time so a normal person who isn't you know focused on mindfulness and meditating like that will uh know that pain is coming there's an increase in you know these bad feelings and all the stuff inside of us in the anticipation of the pain and then they experience the pain and then it's like a gradual slow like it gets mm-hmm. less and less mm-hmm. whereas somebody who's really mindful and practices this it's like nothing 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 pain's here whoop big rise and then steep fall so they mm. are very they're only affected by it for a really short it's period of time yeah and that's why they can do things like walk through fire or do it you know like all those kind of tr- tricks right. and stuff because you know that this is going to be over yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm good. I know that this is going to be done. And I just, let me just look at the pain. Let me invite it in. Let me, you know, and I feel like that with anxiety, with everything. If we just invite it in, look at it, make friends with it, mm-hmm. then it doesn't control us. Well, what isn't painful at all is Everlane clothes and how oh adorable they are. My shoes, boss lady shoes. I don't know what they're called, but it's <laughs> something lady. like that. What if that was the official It's totally name? something like that. It's called like the boss flat or whatever. Okay, okay, and, okay. Oh my Super gosh. Cute. Yes, and do I feel like a million bucks in those things? Italian <laughs> leather. This is another one of those companies that is practicing what they preach. They are sustainable. The clothes are meant to last. They use the finest materials without the traditional markups. So like if they 
make the shirt for seven bucks, they're going to tell you, here's how much we yes. paid and here's how much we are asking you to pay. I just think that that is really cool practice that they're implementing. Um, they have essentials and classic pieces that you can make your wardrobe out of, sort of like the staple yeah, pieces. Yeah, capsule wardrobe, they call those. Yes, I a capsule them. wardrobe. Never have to replace it. It's yeah. like yours for forever. You can get cashmere sweaters. Oh, yes. You can get suits. You can get really nice leather shoes. Nice bag. You got that Yes, clutch. my it wallet. I get compliments on that all the time. Mm-hmm. Right now, you can check out our personalized collection at everlane.com slash brain candy. Plus, you get free shipping on your first order. That's everlane.com slash brain candy. Everlane.com slash brain candy for that deal. Do it. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. so, all right. That's a good good thing. Yeah. Um, Just really learning that our minds, you know, it's kind of giving me more information about how our minds are... Uh, we have more power over them than we think. I just love that. I mean, that's encouraging. It really is. It doesn't seem like that. Yeah. Well, and if it doesn't seem like... I'm telling you, maybe you should just do shrooms <laughs> after <laughs> watching that. Serious. Maybe you should. Maybe, Susie, you need like a, a... I have always been enticed by the people that have done it and what they yeah. say happens. Yeah. I think it would do me some good. Yeah. But just I'm... have to have the environment right. That was what my the big takeaway when I, I watched that I wish you could go thing. to a hospital and do it. Uh, me too, because I do not want to <laughs> do it. I'm too scared to like... I don't know. I I want. I don't. I I'm. I just. I don't want to ever have a bad like one and done. I felt like, and it would need. I would take a. It would take a lot, and I need somebody who's like, the wise old shaman to like guide me through it. Yeah, and not and my I mom because she keeps trying to do that. <laughs> my like, mom, I don't need to do peyote with you. Uh, it's so funny how our moms are the same but so different. Right. It's so I, same it results, but totally different approaches. Totally, because Peg would just say, "You need Jesus," mm-hmm. and she. We were not. We were forbidden from meditating oh my God. as children and teens because oh, we were told oh that God. that by opening up your mind, mm-hmm. that the devil could sneak Correct. right on in there. That's, that's how he does it. <laughs> that's how she does it. Right. <laughs> and Sarah's mom. What is like the opposite. Yeah, she's like, your mind is not open until you do these drugs. Well, or And she's, she's like, right. the most, the thing Peg you got to do is definitely that. open up your mind. You have to open up your mind. But there are limits to that because yes. then certain things. Well, yes. And I told her, I, when we got into this argument, oh, were you there on Christmas when we, she was like demanding <laughs> no, that No, I, I heard about oh, this. Oh, for fight. Christ's sake. Were you there and on I Christmas? Like, I was like, mom, I don't, because we were going to, to Brazil or yeah, yeah. Peru. Yeah. She's like, you have to do peyote, peyote or something. there. Ayahuasca. <laughs> Ayaw- <laughs> not peyote, ayahuasca. She's like, you have oh, to yeah. go on the ayahuasca like journey yeah. and everything. And like, you won't know yourself until you do. And that's when you're going like, to vomit da-da-da. for three of course, days. Because that's what happens. It's poison, right? It, yeah. Sort of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're yes. And, uh, yeah, all the effects are that great, is, grand, wonderful. I am but I was telling interested. her, it's like getting to the top of a mountain via rocket ship or a nice <laughs> hike up the mountain. Um, yeah. I'll take that. Meditation. It's the same thing. You're getting to the same place where you can basically shed yourself of like an ego and connect with the 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 bigger picture and this idea of like where you end and the rest of the world and everything right. begins like that that shedding of like everything that makes you go like oh I'm not enough oh I'm not uh, whatever mm-hmm. that is but I feel like you can do that at a slow nice walking pace yeah me too with mindfulness with just education with like focus learning about it blah 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 and then you learn the path and you know how to get there versus relying on a substance True. to get you to that See, place Sarah's and going yes promoting sobriety all of a sudden right i think um, it's a good thing to do if you're feeling like you know like i can't believe what it did for anxiety and depression yeah the one one it has dose a lot of, of perks. that and in the right setting, of course, with, yeah, and with doses. doctors. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like done with research, you know, professionals and everything. You it. reminded me when you were talking about the hike up the hill. I have an update for you about the um, viral Everest photo we oh, talked yeah. about. Oh, okay. All right. So basically the guy that took the Everest picture, yeah. I think he's a Sherpa or something. And um, he's happy that people... It, brought attention to the problem Mm -hmm. but like he's kind of crabby too because he it's often used without um any yeah like compensation or 
what's the word when you give credit? Uh, uh, credit. Basically. Okay, credit. Yeah. And so, like, he's glad, but he's like, this is the t- another problem that right. people do. But I guess it's good that... What, how, is it, how does awareness even help, though? And also, I feel like aren't... aren't isn't this, don't we kind of live in this age where you just take photos and you post them and it's <laughs> well, like that's what we public, do. <laughs> like, you know, mm. I feel, is he a photographer? It's one thing if he like sells his photos and then that photo was taken for, I don't know. I don't know how I would feel about that. I'd kind of be okay with it. But what is he looking for? Like conversation Why would you himself? be okay with it? Like if I took a photo and I... Oh, it's not just a snapshot, though. I mean, it's really nicely... It's a beautiful yeah. picture. I mean, presumably, he has... Right. Even if you don't, though, I mean, that's how it works. Anything that you post is... To, right. You know, I don't know. No, I'm saying the opposite. Like, if I post something, it's mine, my property. It's oh. not like implicit allowance for anyone to use it. I f- is that how it works, though? Like, legally? Yeah. yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like there are companies that so like if i post a picture of say i don't know a, me drinking a diet coke and i put like enjoying a diet coke in there and i post it on my instagram can't diet coke Mm-mm. like repost that no and do, they can't Mm-mm. maybe I, instagram I could if, thought, uh, depending on their terms of yeah. service but okay good to know i was kind of i always thought it was different i always thought like once you put it out there it then becomes mm, public domain yeah but if that's not the case, then Mm-mm. I only, you know, even think about this stuff because of what, what running the podcast network yeah. and how we have to trademark and get all oh, the yeah. all that stuff. But like, that's not so people don't steal it. That's so like, right? It's no. ours. No, right? Nobody uses it. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, good yeah, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. But anyway, I don't know. I don't understand. And I think how you're right about awareness too. Like, awareness doesn't equal dollars in the bank. That's how I feel about all the breast cancer stuff that the NFL does when they put them in like pink shoes. And they're like, we're putting them in pink to raise awareness. We know that there's breast cancer. Mm-hmm. I don't need your pink shoes. I need some money in the Why bank. Why do you think that that awareness idea is such a big thing? Because that's, that's how I've always felt is like, and now what? Right. Now we're what? aware. Now what? Well, it depends on what we're, what we're raising awareness for. Mm-hmm. And because I remember when I first started with PAVE, that organization, yeah, uh, which is promoting awareness and victim empowerment. That's what it stands for. Yeah. There wasn't an awareness of what was going on. Mm-hmm. So it was really crucial that we make people aware of the, uh, uh, like, you know, just the impact of sexual Mm -hmm. abuse and sexual assault. Yeah. And so that, in that way, or I think like Mothers Against Drunk Driving, maybe like there, there was an awareness that... Yeah. Because an awareness almost makes people change their actions. Yeah. But when it's something like cancer or, Mm -hmm. you know, is it really making you change But what about in the case of Everest? Do you think like that would make people think, well, you know what, maybe I don't want to climb it? Maybe if you were somebody who cared about the environment and really saw what that was like and maybe you would say you know what maybe i I," because when if i had more of an awareness about what machu picchu was like Mm -hmm. and the way humans were not or or were kind of contributing it to its little you know like demise or destruction or whatever you want to call it i think i would have said "Mm, i'm good no no thanks really yeah why what are people doing all I, that poop that you were telling yeah, us I'm about? I'm telling you, it just looks I'm like people you. are... Oh, it's like... It it it's it just doesn't feel like... Na- it, it feels like nature that humans have stomped all over. Really? Like a field of wildflowers that's had 500 people walk really? through it. Really? It feels like that? To me. Oh. It, yeah. It felt like very... How? There were just too many people and... The people, a lot of people didn't care yeah. about, they didn't follow the, you know, t- take only pictures and leave only footprints kind of yeah. attitude. We're a terrible species. And it it really makes me sad and grosses me out. I was, just, this is not really the same, but I was reading about another death that happened at Grand Canyon, which you hear about mm-hmm. periodically, like someone falling or whatever. And this happened on that structure. I've never seen it in person but did you mm. see when you were there the um like it's like a horseshoe that 
arches out no, above the canyon, and it's like a bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of this, though, but I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some guy purposefully... No, what? ...took his life from <gasps> that spot. Ooh. Well, I mean... Which, I mean, kind of isn't surprising. Right. It doesn't... I mean, that, yeah. <clears throat> that you're not going to stop. There's no... No. You're not going to stop that. Yeah. But the ones... Where people like fall, mm-hmm. I'm sure those are preventable. Where people are going beyond the yeah. limits and stuff, but man, it just feels like what you're talking about, where it's just like right. too much, too much going on, right? Too many people, yeah. <laughs> but what can you do, right? Um, on, in San Francisco, on the bridge there, the Golden Gate Bridge, they have uh, signs posted everywhere. That say like, if don't you need do help, it. Call oh man, and really? All over because yeah. that's. The Do you second think most popular ever place went up there in the world. And saw a sign and was like, you know what? Maybe I think I yeah, think so. I hope so. There but- are a lot of stories of people, like taxi drivers or somebody driving along and and saving people who have gone oh, to jump. That's nice. That happens, and yeah. that oh god, like. Be ready if you do choose to watch it. But there's a documentary called The Bridge yeah, where they placed cameras on either side that had a zoom. And they then they captured Why the stories of that the families. <sighs> well, I think or... it was it was somebody who had a friend or relative who did commit suicide. And they, they wanted to know what's going on with the, the people who are doing it. What's What do they have in common? What can we do to prevent this? What can we do to like step in? And if we notice those kind of things happening. Why do and, you think people go for that route? I mean, I know this is dark, but yeah. I just don't. Why would you choose that of all the ways? Mm. I mean, a good old fashioned OD. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm totally it's, joking, obviously. Oh, but I'm just man. saying that seems like a terrible method. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's like, it's, there's not a lot of action on the purse. Like you have to do one move and that's it. There's not a lot of thinking, a lot of stopping, a lot of time yeah, but for... I, don't you imagine that time period uh, between awful. when you choose awful. it and when you right. perish? Yeah. I mean, that is... Well, that's why I hear hell. a lot of people die of a heart attack or that cart like that for real? on the way down. Do you down, think that that's it's, really well, true? Well, I mean, that's what I've heard. I have no idea. This could be one of those things where it's like Makes debunked. Makes you feel better or something. But, you know, but then there, were, there was one guy who lived when he jumped... And he From said what that, the bridge? Yes, and he now is a, a public speaker and talks about like suicide prevention. And he said that what happened yes, that tell day? Me what it's he so said. crazy. So what happened that day is the only way that you survive that is if the water underneath is very choppy yeah. and that it gets churned up. Yeah. And when he fell, there was a seal underneath that was creating a bunch of like turbulence in a way. Yeah. And he fell, and because of the motion of and that seal was like. He saw the seal in well, the water. He Afterwards, he said the seal saved my life. What he felt between the time he jumped and when Ooh, he landed. I don't remember. I have to go back. Because that haunts me, just the undergrad. thought of it. Yeah. And if you would regret it and think, I wish I hadn't done he that. He did. Oh, come Because he on. survived. Cause he, so he was like, yeah. that was, I'm so lucky that I survived and now I know better and I want to, you know. Damn. Yeah. That is haunting and terrible. It really is. It's a real heavy one. <clears> but... <throat> You know. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Was it Chris Cornell? Yeah. It was he the singer that killed himself. I believe. I think it so. was. But yes. that could be totally wrong. He might yeah. be alive and well. Yeah. I don't know. No, I think he, I think so. Okay. But but he's not. Are you talking about the one from uh, Lincoln Park? I don't know. Yeah, he, he's that, just like a popular singer who mm, there, well, did it last feel. year. That's another. I think there's oh, a different one. A different. Okay. Well, anyway, I was thinking about this guy, yeah. the guy that did it. And he had kids, and now the. Yes. I think the daughter is singing now, and I saw mm-hmm. that headline, and I just thought about what you said about how if you can manage to get yourself away mm-hmm. from your own thoughts, like yeah. the bird's eye view. Yes. You would see that, like you know, it really will pass. Yes. Absolutely. But I know that it's a very yes. easy to say that, and there is to a, do. there's a there's uh, some researcher, or I think he's a psychiatrist or something, who created this like three dimensional square that is a model for what's going on with people when they get to that place yeah. where it's a hopelessness and a like emotional pain sure. and this feeling of almost like being backed into a corner where the pain of living is more intense than the fear of dying absolutely and if you can come at that from the three different angles that where this like kind of feeling intersects then you can help 
the person get some of that perspective. Yeah. But because I always, I just think, man, if he could have just lasted yeah. a bit and yeah. gotten out of that fog, yeah. Yeah. then he could still be with his family and mm-hmm. all that. But it's it's fascinating. Chester it's just terrible or something. To think about. Chester. No, I don't know that well, one. It's the guy from Lincoln Park. Okay. I think that's his name. And he struggled with depression. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see that Gary Goldman comedy special. What? He has a special that just came out. I think it's on HBO and it's called The Great Depression. <laughs> and he's talking about how he had to go to a psych ward even. Like he wow. was full blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, how he came out of it and now how he manages it. Yeah. And it's supposed to be really good and... uh inspiring and Good. important. And I think when people talk about awareness, talk about that. Yes, yeah. there you go. And people who where where we can kind of say, yeah, me too. And, and they can say like, look, despite all this stuff that I had, despite this life that whatever it is, yeah. there's still this feeling and it's more than just, yeah. You know, a lot, it's chemical too. Yeah. We can't just like deny that. Right. And, you know, it's like yeah. you're joking saying like laughter isn't the best medicine. Medicine is. Yeah. Same with a lot of this stuff. There's only so much you can do, and then we just have to kind of get the brain chemistry right. Look at your dog. I know. she's so. I told you she was happy. I mean, she is rolling around. Yeah. Like, this is like her favorite day. Just happiest whole... moment Gosh. in her life. Let me have see. Have you if ever I can get been that happy about anything? I don't <laughs> know if I have. No. Are you? Look at how happy you are. That is look hilarious. at that. Now do you believe me that she's happy? I do. Because <laughs> yes. when they got here, Sarah's like, look how happy she's. I'm like, how do you know? Well, there you I go. see it now. She's My like, well, you don't believe me? Look, let me lure all <laughs> around for you. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to play with Bo. Yeah. And uh, you guys should subscribe. Leave us a five-star review. Tell us how great we are. We love that. While you're at it. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 